In last week's video, I used some Henry 547 Unipro patch and skim coat. And I read through some of the written reviews on this product and there's a lot of negative reviews on it. So I just wanted to do a review on this. Is it DIY user friendly? Is it one person user friendly? Let's dig into this. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. In some of the reviews that I read, it seemed as though people were confused as to thinking that the Henry 547 Unipro patch and skim coat was a self-leveler. It is not a self-leveler. It is a firm, thick, a little bit elasticy kind of texture when you put it down. It is intended to be used as to fill low spots um, sometimes you may want to fill some of these low spots before you self-level. That would be just fine. But the intention of this product is to fill low spots and, and it works great for that if you do it the way that it's supposed to be done. It's a little bit tough for a DIYer because it's fast setting. I am not a huge fan of the fast setting products. As a person who works mostly alone, it's uh it, it puts a little <laughs> little pressure on you to go ahead and get that stuff done you have to get your tools cleaned up you have to get back in and get a final trowel on it so the pot life on this product is you know according to the bag 14 to 20 minutes my experience was more like 14 minutes and you know to help give you some more time or to make sure that you get that 14 minutes you need to do everything you can to slow down that cure. I wish, I truly wish that they would, any of these companies producing a fast setting product would also produce a product to slow that down, to give an individual more time if they're working by themselves or a DIYer that might, you know, struggle with things a little bit and then oop, there it goes. Now you gotta hurry up and scrape it up and start over. So if, you know, that, that would be great. That's why I like Rapid Set Mortar Mix so much. They do have a product to slow down the set. And, and it gives you a lot more time and it makes you feel a lot more comfortable working by yourself. Or even if you were inexperienced and you needed just a few more minutes to figure some things out, that product gives you that. What you can do to slow down the set is make sure that the product, the Henry 547 Unipro um, patch and skim coat is not left setting out in the sun. Put it in the shade, cover it, keep it as cool as possible. And the next thing you can do to help slow down that set is to mix it with cold water. The colder, the better. And, and this will give you, you know, even on a warm day, it's going to give you more time to put that product down. If you let it sit in the sun and you mix it with warm or hot water, it's going to cure up really fast or start to set really fast. So make sure you do those two things to give you the amount of time that you need to get that product down, or at least to make you feel better about getting it down. It's going to give you more time. When I was mixing this product, the bags are 25 pound bags. I bought a cheapy little scale and I split these bags in half to 12 and a half pounds. Divided the water in half and I mixed 12 and a half pounds at a time. It takes a little longer, but it gives you a lot more time to spread this before it tries to set up. Now it is tough as a one person operation because you need to clean up your trowel, you need to clean up your bucket scoop, you need to clean up your bucket, and if you're using a screed like I did, you need to clean up your screed. And then you need to get back in and give it a finished trowel. And at the time to do that, even doing the 12 and a half pounds at a time, was a little pressure. You had to get it done and get back in. Um, I also found that if I threw a little bit of water on it, I could get a better trowel. It was not a perfect feather edge which is okay you know it stuck up a sixteenth of an inch here and there or it had a little heavy texture to it no big deal I would let it sit for about 10 minutes if there was anything that I truly didn't like I would take my putty knife and just kind of run it across it and scrape it off um, and, and then there were no issues 
In general, it's 99% flat. So let's go ahead and just talk about what this product is in this product and, and what it can be applied to and what it's good for. The Henry 547 Unipro patch and skim coat is a very universal product. Um, it's a very tough product and it's a great product. It can be applied over almost any type surface, interior surface, to help flatten low spots and to get a nice flat floor for any flooring to be put over the top of it or any floor covering. It's a Portland based product, which is it, that's nice. I like that. I, I like the fact that they're Portland based and it's not vinyl and it's not, you know, it doesn't have any polymers in it and so on and so forth. If you're applying the Henry 547 over wood, it is recommended that you mix Henry 546 with it, which is a feather edge product. And it adds flexibility to the product and it also adds a better bond to the product. Now, even if you don't use the 546, the 547 bonds very nicely to wood. It seems to be very durable. Um, it may get some cracks in it, but it doesn't all bust loose and like come up, um, which is a good thing. So if the 546 isn't available and you just go ahead and put it down, you are not going to run into a complete disaster. In fact, it's, it's going to work out really good for you. Um, if you want to make sure that there's no cracks, no issues, get that 546 in there. During the pandemic, the 546 wasn't available. Mine I put down on the wood without the 546 in it, um, and it seemed to bond well. The other thing I want to bring up is the 547 does not require primer like some of your self-leveling underlayments do. In fact, if you prime it with a, a Henry primer, you may run into problems because it won't adhere properly and it can actually pucker up and cause you some problems. Do not use a primer underneath a Henry 547. It doesn't need it. It has its own bonding agents right in it and it adheres very well with those bonding agents. The Henry 547 is also really nice because it can be used on concrete. It can be used over cutback adhesive on concrete. It can be used over cutback adhesive even on wood, um, provided that you use the, the feather edge. I would use the feather edge to help the adhesion of that product if you're using it on a cutback adhesive over wood. And what I mean by cutback adhesive is that you have removed a floor that was glued down and the glue is, is structural. It's stuck there. It's stuck there good. And you don't want to put this over anything that's not adhered well to the floor because then the Henry's just not going to be adhered well because of what's underneath of it. You can go over the top of any of that glue provided that it's stuck down well with this Henry product. Now, it can also be applied over different types of tile, ceramic tile, terrazzo, stone, many different types of tile. Um, and when you're going over tile, you also kind of want to add a bonding agent because some of the tile is glossy. So here again comes that feather edge, that 546. You definitely want to add it if you're going over tile because that's going to enhance the bonding ability of the product. And that is exactly what you need. But it's, it's nice in that regard because then you, if you're not ripping the tile out and you're just going to go over it and put a laminate on it or something like that, not really how I would do things, but you could. And this product will allow you to do that. It'll go over wood. It'll go over metal. Um, it'll go over just about anything that you can think of. I put some on a plastic trowel and let it dry up just to see how well it would grab a hold and it grabbed a hold really good in fact the plastic trowel went in the trash because you i just couldn't get it all to let go so and i kind of had to take it and smash it up with a hammer a little bit to get off what i could get off when i was installing the henry 547 unipro patch and skim coat i did notice that in the heavier spots and i mean by heavier 
I'm probably my thickest areas on this floor are a quarter of an inch. And when I put it in, I screeded it, it stuck to my screed um, more than I had thought it would. It didn't screed out as well as I had hoped. It was okay because it put the product where I needed it. It just didn't screed out as smooth as I thought maybe it would have. Then I had to go back over and, and trowel it and feather edge it. And when I did that in the heavier areas, it kind of uh, pushed it out a little bit. So that quarter inch of material didn't stay where I had intended it to stay. And, and you know, one of that is because it's a, a little thin. The aggregate in it is very small. So the there's no heavy body or structure to it to where you can, you know, put enough pressure to trowel it and get it flat and get it to stay where you're at. Now, if you're trawling at an eighth of an inch or, you know, right in that area, it seemed to trawl out really nice. It didn't push around too much. I only noticed it when I was going a little bit thicker with it. So in some of those areas, the material got two coats. So I would recommend, and, and in a couple areas, it actually got three. I would recommend that if you have a really low spot that you're trying to fill in, I would do it in multiple thin layers. And the nice part is, is that it dries fast. So you only need to wait 20, 30 minutes before you can put your second layer in, your third layer in, and so on and so forth. Which, you know, it, it is time consuming, but you are going to get the finished result that you're looking for rather than trying to just glob it all in at once, trawl it out. And you definitely don't want to make a high spot so you want to bring it up gradual to make sure that your low spot is turning into a flush spot or a level spot, not into a high spot where you have to grind it down or, you know, if you get at it right as it starts to firm up and you put your straight edge on it and you notice that you have made a high spot, the nice thing is, is you can get your putty knife and you can give it a nice little scraping. You can scrape layers off of it. Uh, and when I say that, I mean you need to do that when you're 15, 18 minutes in. Much more than that, you're not scraping anything off of it. It's going to set up and it's going to grab that quick. It'll still look like it's um, workable. It'll be dark gray. You'll still see the water in it. But it's, it grabs and it sets. All in all, I like this product. I Like I say, I really wish that they would give you more time to work um, or give you a product to put in there to give you more time to work. That would be really nice. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the advent of fast setting. I don't quite understand the purpose of it even from a professional standpoint. Because if I have to um, come into someone's house and I have to do a patch and fill on their floor level their floor, flatten their floor, whatever I need to do, it's going to be a three or four hour job to begin with. So, yep, you can start laying flooring one to two hours after you've put down the Henry 547 and even some of the self-leveling underlayments. If I'm on a job and I'm getting paid, time is money. I'm not going to sit around and wait two hours and be seven hours into my day to start laying some flooring or six hours into my day. I'm going to head on to the next job and get some things started there and come back in the morning. I could do the same thing before the advent of fast setting materials. I could go in, I could get my work done, leave, come back the next day, it's ready to walk on. You can start getting everything laid out, you know, by a couple hours in, a couple, two, three hours in, you're installing flooring. So for me, and the way that I look at it, and, and most pros look at it, is it's the same thing. Yep, you can walk on it faster, you can put stuff down on it faster, but you're not going to, from a professional standpoint, wait for this stuff to, to set up so that you can start installing flooring. You're going to go on and you're going to get your money somewhere else for the rest of that day. So, as far as the fast setting goes, I, I don't really get it. Um, it just creates more problems. It seems like when the first product came out fast setting, 
that, you know, I don't know, they, they started sweating and thought, oh, no, nobody will buy our product because it's not fast setting. Now freaking everything is fast setting. And uh, only a couple of products or one product that I know of, one company is providing you a way to slow that down with their products, you know, and that'd be the rapid set. All of the rapid set products, you can use that set control to slow down the set. Um, no one else has really done that. It makes it tough for a DIYer to do underlayment, self-leveling underlayments, um, and to do any of this other stuff. And the self-leveling underlayments, you can't really um, just mix up little batches and pour it in because you need it to seek the low spots and, and run off of the high spots. And I've noticed that that has kind of changed too. Maybe another video another day, but that's even more difficult, I believe, as a one-man show or a DIYer is to use that self-leveling underlayment. But guys, this Henry 547 is a good product. Mix half a batch, get it down, get your tools cleaned up, get back in there, give it a final trowel, throw a little water on it if you need to, and remember just to take your time and build it up to where you need it. Don't make a hump where you got to grind or scrape stuff down and it, it'll work out and be a great product for you. If you have a big patch, don't try to just layer it in there a little bit at a time and it's going to not crack. It's going to hold for you and it's going to turn out beautiful. All right, guys, that's all we got for this time. Get out there, get your DIY job done. Send me some pictures. I'd love to see it. My email's in the link below. Always is. It'd be great to see those projects. If you enjoyed yourself, watch one of these two videos. It's going to pop up right here, and we'll see you soon.